Hey there, I'm Drew and you are listening to or watching The Anxious Truth, the podcast that covers all things anxiety, anxiety disorders, and anxiety recovery. So if you're struggling with problems like panic disorder, agoraphobia, OCD, or health anxiety, well, you've come to the right place and I'm glad you're here. Today I'm joined by two special guests, two OCD specialists from the state of California. My friends Lauren Rosen and Kelly Frankie are here. We're gonna talk about the wide spectrum of exposure work that you can do from completely on your own to working with a qualified therapist and everything in between. So let's get started on that right now. Hello everybody, welcome back to The Anxious Truth. This is podcast episode number 245, recorded in February of 2023. I am Drew Linsalata, creator and host of The Anxious Truth. If this is your first time listening to the podcast or stumbling into the YouTube channel, I'm glad you're here. I hope you find it helpful. And if you're a returning viewer or a returning listener, welcome back. Of course, I'm glad you're here. So today we are joined by OCD therapists, Lauren Rosen and Kelly Frankie, both practicing in California, both people I am proud to call my friends. And we got together to have a discussion about the wide range of options that people have when doing exposure and especially ERP work for OCD, whether you're working completely on your own because you have no access to a qualified professional for whatever reason, or you're sort of combining things, you maybe you're using books, maybe you're using social media content, all the way to the other side of the spectrum where you are working with a trained OCD specialist, a licensed professional. Uh, and we wanted to look at the pros and cons of all of those things and how they sort of fit together. And more than anything else, we wanted to make sure that you know that even if you're having a hard time finding qualified professional help, you are not doomed. There are things that you can do and you're not doomed to be stuck there forever, I promise. So before we get to the interview with Lauren and Kelly, just a quick reminder that The Anxious Truth is more than just this podcast episode. There are 244 other podcast episodes that came before this one. There are books that I've written on anxiety and anxiety recovery. There are courses and workshops and webinars that I'm doing to help people with their recovery and educate people about these particular topics, take the mystery out of them. There's all my social media content. There's ways to support my work if you're digging it. It's all on my website at theanxioustruth.com. So I would ask you to pop on over there and avail yourself of all the resources. They're there, take advantage of them. And if you decide to support this work financially by buying a course or a webinar or a book or something out of my Etsy shop or whatever it is, I appreciate that, thank you so much. But that sort of support is appreciated but never required. Even if you're here to just listen to the podcast or like a YouTube video or write a podcast review, I appreciate, I appreciate that support too. It's all good, and I'm happy that you're here no matter how you're involved with the work, and I hope that you find it helpful. So let's get on to the interview with Lauren and Kelly. I think it was pretty good. We went for about 25 or 30 minutes, so not too long. I think there's a lot of good information in there, especially, again, if you're struggling to find a therapist, you're having a hard time access, accessing that either in your state in the U.S. or the country that you're in, or maybe it's a financial thing. A lot of reasons why it can be hard to find professional help. We tried to go through this as much as we can to give you as much good information about that situation and different options and how people handle it. So let's get to it and I will come back at the end to wrap it up and give you all the links and ways to find their podcast and all the stuff. So enjoy the interview and I'll be back afterwards to wrap it up. Okay, as promised, here we are with the fabulous Lauren Rosen and Kelly Frankie from the Purely OCD podcast, both... Uh, practicing therapists in the state of California and beyond, at least in the case of Lauren, <laughs> and beyond, yeah. and uh, specializing in OCD. And uh, Purely OCD is a great podcast that you guys should check out. So I'm going to put that up on the screen. I'm going to put it in the show notes. We'll talk about it at the end. But here we are to talk about this whole idea of the pros and cons of like how to do exposure and ERP work. Like that scale of like, I'm doing it all on my own because I can't find a therapist to like, I have a team of therapists that are awesome and they're helping and everything, mm -hmm. everything in between. So Totally. You guys have encountered this, I'm guessing, in your practices. Absolutely. Actually, Kelly was just mentioning something to that, you know, yeah. end. Right. So um, what I was talking about is that um, lots of times people can't afford treatment, right? Like it's expensive. It's a it's really privileged to be able to go to therapy and also to have the access and to have a specialist in your state because there's a lot of laws that restrict MFTs to treat outside of your state. Um, and so when people reach out to me and that's not, and we've 
run down all the avenues and none of those are viable options, I will give them referral of books, self-help OCD books that I rely on and I trust. And I will say, you can start here because they show you how to build hierarchies. They give you sample exposures, um, sample imaginal exposures, response prevention, all the basics. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, this treatment can be very nuanced, right? Like it's, there's a lot of nuance in OCD and it's not to be missed and it's, it can easily be missed with some of it yeah. if you're not a trained professional. Um, and like I was asking Lauren, if she'd ever experienced this and turns out she has as well, where people have done a lot of work on their own and then come to us for the last stretch. Yeah. Which is, it's way cool. And as a, cause Kelly was saying that it, it's amazing what people are capable of and learning and so much learning can be done outside of the, the therapeutic relationship. Um, that being said, there are lots of different approaches too. And so I love, I, I do the same thing and, and not just States, but different countries. There are places yeah. all over the world where there is no access to specialized care. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are laws that prohibit us from, from working there. Um, you know, because it's regulated in the country, for instance, and, and we don't have all of, all of the credentialing behind us to, to offer support. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think one of the things, so yes, there's lots of different ways to go about treating. And obviously there are lots of people out there who are selling things that you don't want to be buying. Mm -hmm. Like like the guy on, on Instagram who I don't even remember, was that a year ago where he was like, celery cures OCD. <laughs> oh, yeah. and it's like, oh my God, He's please. my favorite. Yeah, really yeah. though. It's just, it's so upsetting because it is so many people are looking for something to hold on to. And, you know, understandably they're like, Oh, great. Sign me up for that. Mm -hmm. So first I, I think obviously there are a lot of resources online. You can get to know different clinicians and their style. And if you relate to it, oftentimes we'll have resources linked on our websites and stuff like that. I know Kelly and I both do. Um, so there's that, but also what, what tends to happen as Kelly said, and I'd love to get both of your thoughts on this, the, the nuance in treatment is something that sometimes gets lost. And so what we'll see is I'll see on my Instagram account, people saying, well, but what about this? And I'm like, I can't, I can't respond to your personal queries on Instagram because it's not therapy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know the whole context of, of your story. And so that's where I think therapy becomes really important as you have these sort of follow-up questions that, that can't, that aren't necessarily going to be answered by a book. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. I think what I see most often in the community I'm fortunate to have around this podcast is exactly that. So, you know, mm -hmm. things like Instagram and the content we all produce can provide general guidelines and, but mm -hmm. everybody gets very focused on their specific fear or their specific thought or their specific compulsion or whatever it happens to be. And then they want specific instruction on that, which is where this falls down and where a mm -hmm. book probably falls down. But what I always try to tell people is like, well, you know, just think of the principles at play here. And I know that you think your specific thing is different and special and needs its own instruction, but you can try to go back to the guiding principles that are in that book that you read and how can you apply them. But I think that's where it becomes really tricky to do some of this work without professional help. There's that. And then there's the interpretation of how they feel when they do it without that mm -hmm. person to sort of coach them through that. No, no, no. You're supposed to really feel uncomfortable right now. Often I find that this isn't, this isn't going to work for me because it made me worse, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you guys right. confront every day. Well, Absolutely. We even, we even find, oh, I don't feel anything. Is that Oof. a problem? Like when they're yeah. doing exposures, right? So it can go either way. And so that's why it's really helpful if somebody who has OCD and is, is worried about harming their child and they're doing an exposure that's out of a book mm -hmm. and they don't feel scared. Oh, backfire. Call. <laughs> yeah. Does this mean I, does this mean I want to do it? Right. Yeah. So it can happen that quickly where things can go kind of sideways. But I think the, the bigger picture to take away is like compulsions are the problem. You know, mm. um, if, if focusing on 
removing compulsions usually doesn't require a ton of like nuance per se. Well, it can, but Mm -hmm. because we can scale it, therapists can scale it better. Um, and just verbally going through it and emotionally, but yeah, I mean, I think if you can say remove the compulsions, work on exposures through a therapist, I I don't know. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. I actually, I appreciate, and Kelly knows there's a quote that recently that came out from John Hirschfield. Um, he wrote this wonderful article and this is why I wanted to bring it up. Um, of course now I can't find it, but it was something to the effect of, uh, like an update on the poetry of, of, of OCD therapy. Um, he said like, and space, right at the end of it, he says something like cut to the chase, like, compulsions bad <laughs> like if you, there's your there's your ear uh, yes an update on the poetry of evidence-based psychotherapy i'll send drew the link mm-hmm. um but yeah at the at the very end of the article he's like that's your <laughs> there's that's your uh, yeah uh, let's cut to the chase compulsions bad that's your ocd treatment protocol <laughs> Just so perfect. But it's yeah, fa- I, I love brilliant. that somebody of his stature too can combine a, a silly line like "here's cut to the chase, compulsions bad" with also the words poetry and recognizing how complicated and nuanced this could be because it is. It's flat yeah, yeah. Is. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, actually, great resource too if you're interested in understanding more about the, the different treatment modalities used, so that you can be an informed consumer when you're looking for, if you happen to be on the lookout for a therapist. Mm. Um, oh, and the other thing I wanted to say is one of the areas that I often see people get stuck in, in uh, independent of being in therapy is the obsessions related to doing treatment right. Yep. And so the tendency to bring this worldview that really, uh, I don't know, exemplifies OCD where everything is black and white and I have to do it correctly or else it, it sort of gets moved on to treatment. If you don't have somebody there going, aha, you're trying to do treatment perfectly. Okay. Well, we're not going to do that. And here's why. And here are the, look, see, you have thoughts about that and you have feelings about that too. And there are the compulsions that you might be doing in order to make Mm -hmm. sure, and that's not going to help you. Yeah. That makes sense. There's also the other thing that comes up. And so it's funny because we have the spectrum here. Like you can be completely on your own because you have no access to anybody. You can use yeah. books. Then there's a social media thing. Then there's actually working with a therapist. So there's multiple, you know, the steps you can take. In the middle of that is the big old social media pond where, where there are not just people like you guys, but there are also the people who are consuming the content who then interact with each other. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm always yeah. curious what that is. Yeah, I'm that, always curious, like, are my clients talking to other people in this world? <laughs> well, I will tell you, here, I can answer that question for you. Not you specifically, because <laughs> no one's ever said, my therapist Kelly said, no, I mean, <laughs> maybe it's either, maybe they are your client, but I don't know. Sure, Drew, but sure. But I, I <laughs> will, at least a few times a week in a very large Facebook discussion group, I will get people who will come in because their therapist said a thing. And instead of asking the therapist or asking for clarification or texting or setting it up for the next session, they come to me and want me to confirm or deny that what the therapist said is correct. And mm-hmm. Oh, Drew, they asked us. I guarantee it. Now they're getting <laughs> Well, I didn't want to go there, but <laughs> but I'm pretty sure. But I get that. Probably. Like, well, Yeah, no. But Kelly didn't give me the answer I want, so let me ask Drew now or someone else on social media because I, I'm really hoping for a different answer. I get that. That's probably part of it. But it, it is fascinating to see how like this thing that didn't exist 15 years ago is probably changing that dynamic a lot as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In a good Absolutely. way and a tricky way. Yes, right? I agree. Without it, we wouldn't have as much community. We also wouldn't be able to get access to resources. And it's kind of also it's Achilles heel because then you have people who are just like compulsively consuming stuff, they're using language that's tweaked just a little enough 
that it sounds different than what a therapist is saying. And then they get stuck on that mm -hmm. is like, well, isn't, um, asking for reassurance all bad. Like I should mm. never ask for reassurance is a common one. Mm. It's like, well, it's only if it's compulsive. That's the only <laughs> time it ever is. Right. Well, meaning right. re reassurance again and again and yeah. again. Like I've had to, I've had to address that. You're right. That gets convoluted sometimes. But I could be like, Hey Drew, do you think that guy thinks I'm an asshole? And you could be like, probably. And I'll be like, all right, cool. And then we drop it. <laughs> But if I'm like revisiting it over and over, you'd be like, you need to call your therapist. Yeah. It's like, this is the problem. Kelly, this is an intervention. <laughs> this is not a podcast. No. We're actually, it's an intervention. We didn't want to tell you. I um, knew it. No, I get that. And I, I think the other thing that comes into it, if you're looking at the spectrum of how you do your exposures, whether on your own and all the way up to working with professionals, then there's the support. support. And I'm, I'm going to use that lovingly because I love that people can support each other. But yeah. there's also pitfalls to air quotes support. And I get mm -hmm. it all the time like, well, I want an accountability partner. Well, that's a great idea, except if the other person isn't prepared to shrug their shoulders at your fear sometimes and not yes. try to be kind and soothe you, then they're not going to really help you. So yeah. people get that. But then also it's like, I don't understand. We should have a support group. And then the support group devolves quickly into... Don't you hate it's it? It's going to be fine. Think? It's going to be fine. <laughs> this feels so real. I know I hate it. No one understands it quickly. It's not useful anymore. It's co-rumination on steroids. So it's, it's, it's so hard. So, yeah. Yeah. We actually just did a podcast, uh, podcast episode on this the last week, uh, about how to seek support without seeking reassurance Yeah, uh, because it's super important and, and support is, but again, the nuance there and so much nuance gets lost in social media anyway. And then you have yes. a treatment or on any sort of written platform, mm -hmm. but then you have a treatment that there are so many paradoxes or seeming paradoxes and dialectics that are involved, you know, where we're, you know, to anyone who's listening, who doesn't know about dialectics, you're holding two things that seem opposite to one another, but in fact are not. So you could post something and then somebody mm -hmm. says, well, but my therapist said this and they're not mutually exclusive. But again, that sort of narrow viewpoint on I'm trying to do it right interferes with the ability to understand and, and implement. Yeah. Doing it right. Mm -hmm. what, what, Kelly, what are your thoughts on, I, I'm going to, I'm going to put you on the spot in a big way here because I think right. human nature, if two people are going yeah. to try to support each other or 10 people or 10,000 people, human nature is I see you in distress, my friend, and I want to ease your pain right now. And I want to make you feel better and fix it. That's generally human nature. Whereas mm -hmm. in the training you have gone undergone, you are almost taking a vow to not do that when you know it's counterproductive. And that looks so wrong unless you are willing to go down that road. How, how do you address that? Because that's a tough one too. I've been abandoned. I'm not getting support. Yeah. Yeah. I have so much to say on it. So I, bring it. <laughs> and I'm sure Lauren will too. But honestly, just to pull apart some of the first things you were saying is, when somebody early on comes into treatment and they're really stuck, like you better believe I am giving them reassurance, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm explaining to them, this is OCD. This sounds like OCD. These are the reasons why. And then I'm testing like they're, I'm doing reality testing really when I'm doing like restructuring of thoughts is like, do they know that cognitively this is off mm -hmm. like do they know that there's something about like they reached out to me right or if you have a client who's so fused with the thoughts that they're not willing to do anything sometimes there's a little bit of coaching of reassurance giving it's a sliver but it's it's more of like hey i know this is hard reframing it you're restructuring it and going from there so it's kind of like you're building this tolerance of it if you will mm -hmm. some clients are ready to go. They're like, I already know when I met with you, like I already know it's uncertainty. I know you can't get rid of my anxiety. I'm like, obviously they've been on social media or they've read a hundred books. Mm -hmm. So, okay, great start. Um, but yeah, I mean like Lauren and I are good friends and we have OCD and when I'm stuck or she's stuck, um, we're very careful because we're both obviously professionals too. 
in, hey, how can I support you right now? Can I help you reframe this? Like, do you need just to talk about it and just get it out and I listen? Um, can Like, can I offer you a reframe, right? <laughs> One of my favorite lines you guys have ever said. Yeah. <laughs> Can I offer you? It is the OCD equivalent to, can I get you something to drink? Yeah. (laughs) I mean, right? Because that person is going to be like, there's so many times where Lauren and I are like, we just have to say it. And then like, I know I have to, this sucks and this is super scary. And then the person just like owns it and you're just witnessing it, right? Like I might come to my phone an hour later, she comes to her phone an hour later and it's like, oh, wow, that person just worked through it without, they just needed a witness. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is great. But I think one of the things that's so important in that is, is that we're both in a place where we recognize that certainty is a total illusion. So we're not yeah. actually seeking certainty from either uh, each other. We're just saying, wow, it's really hard to be with this uncertainty sometimes. And it's scary. And right now I'm feeling a lot of things and I'm mm-hmm. going to pivot toward what's important to me in my life. Um, I love you, right? Like I just, I, I, I just want, I want to be held in this experience and know that like there are other human beings on this planet who understand mm-hmm. that it's very, very challenging to to live with this disorder. Which is, uh, that is one of the power, the, the powerful things about if you have to do it on your own or partially on your own, you get to access a community like that. Tremendous power in that. I think one of the things that yeah. would be interesting, not that, not that we're going to subpoena your text messages. We might, if things get out of hand, but <laughs> But I, I would guess that in those exchanges as friends, but also trained professionals, you probably have that time where it's like, man, this really sucks, says Lauren. And Kelly mm-hmm. says, I hear you. It, this sucks on ice in a big way. No lie there. But I'm yeah. guessing that that conversation does not continue that way no. for eight hours that day. That's no. the pitfall of when, you do, when you're on your own and you're trying to rely on the internet to support you. That's one of the things that can go wrong. Right. And honestly, we're so busy that half the time we don't get to our, like, we don't see it right away. Right. So people going into like a support group, they're like, I need an answer. I need to know it now. Yeah. And I'm going to throw it out to a thousand people so I can get somebody to say something right now. Um, And also when people are like in their recovery well in or, and they feel like they're really like confident and they trust everything that their therapist has said, I've seen this a few times and like, they know how to do ERP, they know how to do exposures, and then they go in and kind of try to be an expert to somebody else, Mm -hmm. not realizing like they saw it through their lens of OCD. And that can be really get in in somebody's way of progress. That's where I see the, that's reassurance seeking and people get shut down instantly and like, well, wait a minute, this might be the person's very first day. You don't know yeah. that, but yeah, I, but I know people have the best of intentions. So I think the million dollar question here that everybody's going to ask when they listen to this podcast, because I know they're going to ask it even without the podcast. Have, <laughs> have you seen people recover without, I'm not, I'm not saying that you're suggesting they do it alone or without a therapist, but is it possible? And you might say, I I've don't know. I've never seen it because I'm a therapist. So people Good point. Seen. Solid point right there. Reporting yeah. bias for the win. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, so you're talking to a very biased sample. Yeah. <laughs> mm, good point. I could see where, like I was saying earlier though, and Lauren as well is like, we've seen people do a lot of, you know, and honestly, these were people that were pretty straightforward OCD. Um, and they've come back, they've, they've done a bulk of the work and now they're like stuck on a few bits and pieces and we're going to work through it and maybe clarify some other things. Um, yeah. but I've seen that. I've seen it a few times. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Or where they just latch onto treatment really quickly, even if they haven't done a bunch of, of, uh, research in advance and mm-hmm. it just, it goes quickly. They know what's up. They do it. It's, you know, but I, yeah, I will say too, that once you've been through treatment, you can support yourself. And I think any good, hopefully, uh, OCD therapist or anxiety therapist is going to say like, it's okay. Like try your, try your skills out on this. You mm-hmm. I'm here, you know, you can reach out to me. I'm, I'm here as a support, but you have so much more capacity than, than you sometimes give yourself credit for. I like it. Yeah. And we'll start to say like near the end of treatment is like, 
okay, so what do you, what would you do in this situation, right? As we're preparing them to launch mm -hmm. is like, let's have you do this hierarchy. Let's have you do the exposures and assign it to yourself. And um, what do you think, what, right? So we're trying to empower them and move them into being responsible for their own treatment and recovery long-term instead of relying on us. And oftentimes they'll say things like, Kelly, I heard your voice. And I'm like, ooh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, still, ne I'm never going to get used to that. I heard you yeah. saying, no, don't hear me saying. <laughs> yeah, don't. So, so sorry, I live in your head now. Uh, yeah. Because I live in mine and it's not always pretty. I'm just kidding. Uh, no, no, I get that. But it's good news though. The good news in that statement is like, you know, well, I can't find a therapist or I can't afford a therapist. Can Is it impossible? Well, not necessarily, but difficult, but you also see people respond so well post-treatment and like, it's not, a, it's not hopeless is the, I think. No. People feel like I, I can't find a therapist, especially in other countries where there's access is so limited. I'm, I'm done. I'm never going to get better. I, th yeah. I don't think, think it means you have to stay where you are. So there might be no. a disadvantage there, but you're not stuck where you are. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. There's big old dead. And, and I think job drew. even, no, I was just going to say, <laughs> even, even when, um, when you're in therapy, there's so much that you're, most of what you're doing is outside of therapy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yes, the therapist guidance is going to help you to navigate. It's, it's going, it's like going to, um, oh my gosh, why can't I think of the name of the tallest mountain in the world? Everest. Thank you. Oh Welcome. my gosh. That is wow. So you're going to Everest. Okay. I don't think you can do this, <laughs> but you could in theory, like actually do it alone, right? You could bring your oxygen tanks and carry what you need. I'm sure it's, it's somebody did it mm -hmm. at some point. Uh, you probably lived there for a while and you acclimated to the weather first, but and not the weather, the altitude, but I swear this is going somewhere. So if that said, it's a lot easier to do it with a guide yeah. and, and there's a lot less risk involved if you, well, I mean, I'm sure that there's plenty of risk anyway, cause it's Everest and, you know, but it, it, yeah, it's less risk than it would be otherwise. And so, and it's, it's going to go probably a lot smoother. I think that's the way to look at it. Cause we've, we've climbed this mountain a lot of times with a lot of people. And if this is your first time climbing it, you know, you you might get stuck places that, and not be aware of how to walk through it and all of that. Um, let me put up your stuff on the screen here. First of all, in terms of getting at these two lovely human beings in general, if you're watching on YouTube, here are their Instagram handles. I am putting them up on the screen, Kelly and Lauren. And then your podcast, you've been doing it for a while now. It's an outgrowth of your Instagram lives, right? It's called Purely OCD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a couple couple of years now that we've been recording yeah. and maybe a year <laughs> since we like officially took it to podcast platforms. Yeah. Um, so somewhere around like 60 something episodes, which is wild. That's more yeah. than I thought you had. I'm clearly not listening enough. Well, in oh. fairness, some of the very early episodes, the audio is just, it's atrocious. <laughs> and, yeah. and we don't know, we're, we're just having fun. We didn't think it would be a podcast. And then we just ripped the audio from it yeah. and said, screw it. The yeah. best way to start a podcast is just have something to say, it's I guess. So. That's all. Yeah. Anyway, if you guys want to find, you can just search purely OCD podcast and any podcast platform on Google, or if you go to mm -hmm. the anxious slash 246, because this is episode 246, I will put all the links on the page okay. so you can get to everything and good conversation. Thank you guys. I appreciate you coming by to, to hang out. So thanks thank for having you. us. We will do it again Always sometime. Pleasure. We can do yeah. it again every month anyway, because if you guys have not seen our YouTube videos that we do every month, we're going to be back next <laughs> month to do another one of these. So it's not like you're never going to see okay. it again. Come hang with us. We, we, hang we all entertain ourselves at least on, on Friday mornings as we, we do. As we that is true. The, yeah. If nothing else, we think we're hilarious if nothing else. So, and there are lots of Lebowski <laughs> quotes that you won't understand if you haven't watched it. Uh, in true. I don't know the last decade. I blame, but, uh, I blame my, Kelly for rolling in with that and pushing my buttons and she gets me going. Yeah. So. Anyway. All right, guys, I'll come back in two minutes to wrap this up as I usually do. So hang okay. in there. 
Okay, we are back. That was great. I enjoyed having the conversation. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to it. Hope there was something useful in there for you. Hey, listen, trying to find professional help when you really want it can be really challenging. Clearly, there is issues in mental health here in the States and other countries that we have to address. It's really important. Uh, it can be very difficult to find the kind of help that you need, especially if you're dealing with OCD, which is kind of its own thing, even within the anxiety disorder community. So hopefully you've gotten some useful information out of that. And if nothing else, the message that you're not completely screwed if you're having a hard time finding a therapist. You can stitch together a bunch of other resources. And uh, if you want to find several of the resources that Lauren and Kelly mentioned, they mentioned books, they mentioned things like that. I will put them in the show notes of this podcast episode. So just go to the anxious slash 246. And I will have links to Kelly and Lauren's podcast, Purely OCD. I will have links to their individual Instagram accounts. And I will have links to some of the resources that came up in this episode so that you can find them. So that is it. That is episode 246 of The Anxious Truth in the books. You know it is over because the music is playing. That music is Afterglow by my friend Ben Drake. You hear it at the end of every podcast episode. He wrote the song, at least in part inspired by this podcast several years ago, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to use it in the podcast ever since with his permission. Thank you, Ben. You can find more about Ben and his music on his website at bendrakemusic.com. So go check him out. Tell him I said hi if you do that. I'm going to ask you the same favors that I always do. If you are listening to this podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or some platform that lets you rate and review the podcast, leave a five-star rating if you dig it. Maybe take a minute, write a quick review because it helps other people find the podcast. Then we can help more and more people, which is why I started doing this to begin with. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when I upload more videos. Maybe leave a comment on this video because I do swoop back a couple of times a week to answer my YouTube comments. I always enjoy interacting with you guys. And that is it. We are out the door. I hope you found it useful. I will be back next week. I do not know what I'm going to be talking about, but I will be here. And remember, as always, this is the way. You got the feeling that you're going to win. Yeah, you're doing fine. Now in the city and you're living fast. No looking back or dwelling on the past You know you'll never get another chance So go and live your life